Hey guys, welcome back to Build It Yourself. I'm Diego, and today we have a real special treat for you guys. We're finally getting rid of these ugly log manifolds and we're making way for some proper headers. We want these headers to be one of the key features of this build, so they have to look and sound as crazy as swapping a four valve V10 into a front wheel drive Lincoln Continental. Now we can start cutting and welding pipes until we got something that fits in the car. But we know that for these to sound the best, we have to be able to design and optimize for length and packing. So we have to somehow get a CAD model of the engine and the car. Now there are many 3D scanners on the market, but we thought they were either too expensive or not capable of doing that kind of job until we found RevoPoint. RevoPoint is a global leader in 3D scanning technology and their goal is to make professional 3D scanning results accessible to people like me and you without breaking the bank. And to demonstrate how far 3D scanning technology has come, RevoPoint has sent us their all-in-one Morocco 3D scanner. Come check this out. I don't need computer, I don't need wires, I don't need anything. I can scan what I need and process everything all in this pack. With this, we're going to be able to design the sickest set of headers of any Ford V10. We're gonna be putting this thing to the test and showing you guys some of the cool features it has to offer. If you wanna see more, you can check out the Morocco website. And if you're looking to buy your own 3D scanner, make sure you use the code BIYREVO7 off to get up to 7% off on your purchase. You can also check out their Facebook page for feature demonstrations and cool giveaways. All the links are in the description below. Thanks again to Riva Point for supporting the channel and helping us elevate this build to the next level. Now let's make some sweet sounding trumpets. Last year, we built and fired up our very own version of Ford's dual overhead cam V10. It sounded so good, but it was hindered by the stock exhaust manifolds and everyone made sure to let us know. And we're stuffing it into this 2017 Lincoln Continental. It's got a front end from a Mustang, an S550 GT500. It's got an IRS from a Mustang GT. We've modified the firewall and put in a trans tunnel for the MT82 behind this V10. And the reason we ran these two valve V10 manifolds was because we need headers that are gonna fit in this pack. So we actually have a lot of things to work around and you can see now with the engine in position. So obviously we have a big engine on a not so wide engine bay. So we have so much room in between the engine and the body that we have to make headers fit. We have to work around engine mounts. We obviously have the steering shaft we have to work around you know maybe some stuff here like uh, the thermostat housing so the goal for us is to design equal length true equal length headers we want to target down to the millimeter you buddy so, uh, I... you know we're the, and that's where the cad and the 3d scanning is going to come into play we're going to be able to do that right on the money hopefully uh and 3d scanning all of this is going to allow us to design them and you know just... i mean making them in cat is going to be easy but real life uh... yeah whatever noodles we come up with we're going to have to convert that to pipes which neither jack or myself have ever worked on headers like this so it's going to be fun it's going to be interesting a lot of work but we're super excited i mean we want to make this thing sound as good as possible so that's what the, we're going with like the best sounding like car Pagani's the on, uh, of course alex like so. Salafe. So the first step is gonna be scanning all the engine, the engine base, so we can start laying out the runners for the headers. But before we get there, we're gonna be putting these uh, markers on the engine and areas on the body. These come in the kit. So this allows the, the 3D scanner to track as it's going around. Um, so we're gonna go lay those up and we'll get to scanning. So we're just marking out the areas with this tape so we can pull it off later so then we can find it easier because those little dots are kind of hard to see. Thanks to that Cletus video for telling, showing us to do that. With our markers laid, we fire up the Morocco and inaugurate it by removing the plastic protector, going against every Abuela's wishes. The scanner boots directly into the home screen and in the center it displays what the scanner is picking up right away. The home screen has everything you need easily accessible to start scanning. All the main settings are on this one screen. 
You can choose the accuracy of the scan, the alignment method, and for dark objects, there's even an option to help with that. To start scanning, you can click directly on the touch screen or press the button on the top, just like taking a picture on a camera. It's really cool to watch the point cloud being generated on the screen. It's like the model is materializing right before your eyes. The blue is the existing point cloud that has been captured, and the green is what the scanner is picking up in that shot. It's so satisfying to watch as it builds. All right, so this scan is coming along pretty good. It's taking shape. One thing we notice is you can see all the dark stuff, like the pulleys and some of these body areas, they're not coming through on the scan. The coil covers, right? They're just essentially not captured. So one thing you can do, they actually sell a 3D scanner spray. That's a little pricey. So what we're gonna do, we're using this uh, athlete's foot uh, spray. It's a powder spray, so it has the same function, we're gonna give it a shot. We've seen a couple of videos, some people say this thing works pretty well. So we're gonna give it a shot. We're gonna spray the pulleys. We're gonna spray some of these areas and see if we can capture some of these dark areas on the scan. And uh, thankfully, you know, with this thing, all we have to do is click on resume scan and we can get back to scanning on the same project so we don't have to start something new. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so let's start spraying and resume the scan. Even though the Morocco has the dark mode, we found the spray to work better, so we decided to go that route. You can now see how all the dark areas are showing up in the scan. We found that if you move too fast, the scanner would lose tracking and warn you with a red image and a pop-up. But if you stand still for a second, it usually figures it out and you can continue. All right, well, I think we got everything we need from this scan. It's looking pretty good. Well, something you can do with this scanner, if you have a USB-C to HDMI cable, you can actually project to a big screen live. So let's plug this in so you guys can see a little bigger what we scan here. Just plug it into this and it should project straight to the TV. There it is. So the screen you're seeing here, it's right over there and you know everything moves with it. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, you can see, so we scanned the engine as much as we could. We scanned the engine bay, and for the 10 minutes it took, this is actually a lot of detail it picked up. So that's really cool. Um, so what you're actually looking at here is the raw data. So if I zoom in, you can see a little better. These are just thousands, millions of points. This is called the point cloud. That's what the scan actually picks up. We can't actually use this data for what we need, right? We need to actually CAD. But one of the cool things about the scanner is that you have this one tap edit button. So we're just gonna click this and it should give us usable data that then we can transfer to our computers. So let's click on that and see what it does. I bet it fast. Yeah, we'll do fast. Oh, damn. So it's done processing and now you can see it's fully meshed. You can see the surfaces a lot better. That's crazy. Like, I don't even know how it does that. All the points, they're now fused. And you know, you can fine tune things. You can go into settings and maybe make it a little bit more detailed. This was just the fast one. So I wonder what the detailed one looks like. I mean, this is more than enough. I yeah, mean, look, yeah, this is everything we need really. So pretty much real life. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, th there's a couple other features that, you know, we think is pretty cool here. So you can see on the scan, there's like some random stuff floating in space. We don't really need that. With this scanner, I can click on this lasso setting, highlight this area I don't want, and then I can just delete it and boom, it just takes it away. It's so Pretty neat. Cool. Yeah. So, I mean, this thing is crazy good. So normally to get to this point, you would have to plug it into a computer, get some, you know, software to get to actual usable file, something you can use for modeling or 3D printing. With the Morocco, you can see it's all here. So that's one of the really neat things about the scanner. It's all it's all in one package. I could literally take this file and plug it into my 3D printer and make my own, my second four valve V10. So now that we have this, as you can see the detail is there, but if I zoom in a little more here, you can see that the area that we actually care about in this area is all black. So we just can't physically fit the scanner in between the engine and the body. So we couldn't get any of that stuff. So what we're gonna do 
we're actually going to separate the engine from the body. We're going to scan the engine, we're going to scan the body, all separate. Then we're going to actually take all those scans and take them over to the Revo Scan 5 software in the computer because in that software you can actually merge a bunch of scans together and it aligns it automatically, which is going to save us a ton of time. Otherwise, we'd have to align it manually and we really haven't messed with these kind of files before. So we're going to go ahead and separate the engine from the body, scan it, and then uh, merge it all together into software. Guys, we are so close to the 25,000 subscriber milestone. We decide we're going to celebrate early. We're going to be doing our very first giveaway. We're going to be throwing in this brand new plasma clutter into one random order. That's right. All you have to do is visit our merch store, shopbiy.com, and get your order in within seven days from the drop of this video. This thing could cut metal up to almost one inch. It comes with an adapter to run on 220 or 110. All you gotta do is just hook up your air and it's ready to go. If you've never used one of these things before, it's fun to cut metal like it's butter. We use one all the time. We use one to cut all the sheet metal for the firewall. And that one is not even as good as this thing is. So we know this thing will come in handy. We'll also be throwing in extra consumables so you won't run out. And we got these sick auto darkening glasses we'll be throwing in. So you won't be visiting the optometrist after your first use. If you already got your BIY swag, don't worry. We got you covered because we're dropping a whole bunch of new stuff like this. BIY 40 valve V10 keychain so you can take a little 40 valve with you wherever you go And if you love V10s as much as we do we got these new jet tag keychains so we could tell the whole world We need more V10s in our lives Especially big cam big displacement rowdy V10s like the 40 valve So we came up with this new design the American double overhead cam V10 with the BIY on the front over the American flag and on the back, we got the custom pistons, custom cams, and obviously the head and the intake over the American flag because this is the American double overhead cam V10. You can get this on a hoodie in sand or black. We also mixed up the classic BIY V10 engine shirt with some new colors and we ghosted out the V10 40 valve emblem. You can get this in a black shirt or a black sweatshirt. And then of course we got all the classic t-shirts, sweatshirts, stickers, and even the bulkhead connectors we actually used on this build. So visit shopbiy.com and get your order in in the next seven days. The order could be for anything, even something as simple as just this sticker, and you could be the lucky one to get that 65 amp plasma clutter kit in your mailbox. We're gonna be doing more of these in the future, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out and help us get to that magical 25K subscriber mark. Now let's get back to work. What's this color option? Color? Oh, yeah, well, color? This, yeah, this, you can actually scan in color with this uh, scanner. It's pretty cool. What? Like people scan bodies and stuff. What? Know. Yeah, you can right, like, scan, scan a full you. person. Let me scan you. Wait, don't move. Oh. Don't move. Hold on. Can I move my mouth? <laughs> all right, it's all done. I'm going to process right, let me it see. before oh. I show you. Hold on, hold on, hold okay. on. Hold on. Let me process. <laughs> Holy <laughs> What does it look like? Oh my God. Wow. That's pretty fucking good. Wait, what is that? Oh, that's my hand. Yeah, because you're holding the camera. Yeah, yeah. So if you need to scan yourself for a cool Christmas present for your significant other, there you go. It's tracking on your ca camera like a face. You what? know, like it, it sees it as a face. Let me zoom in. Oh, is it actually? Yeah, yeah. well, it was showing, you know, the yellow square. Oh. Of course, we had to take this thing and try it out in the wild at Taco Bell. You can really see how the texture is picked up in color mode. Hungry yet? It was time to lift the car off and we made sure to support the subframe and engine so it would stay in position. Now we had access to scan all the sides of the engine and motor mounts and get the details that would be critical in designing the headers. We were able to also capture the subframe and steering rack. Fortunately, we were able to get the whole engine bay in one scan. The body scan was so fast and easy that we will definitely have to use it when it's time to work on the exterior. So we finished scanning everything. So you can see here's the, uh, all the different scans for this project. So there's the dash, here's the passenger side, this one's the driver's side, and then this one's the overall 
you can see the difference between raw data and meshed, <laughs> how everything's smooth. But I think we're happy with what we have now. We're gonna throw it in the computer, see how it merges, see what it looks like. We may need to redo some scans, but I think we got enough data that we can at least put it together, see what it looks like. And if we need more stuff, then we can throw more, more scans in it. But um, let's throw these in the software and, and see what we come up with. With the Revo software, we were able to process all four scans with just one click. The next step was to merge the four scans together. The software has the ability to do this automatically, which we tried. Unfortunately, one of the four scans did not align properly. This is probably due to not having enough overlapping data or the parts were just too symmetrical. So we let the program merge the first three together, then we used the manual option to align the last scan. Alright, so we got everything merged now and it looks pretty good. We got all the detail I think we need in the in here. We got the motor mounts, we got the steering rack, we got the shaft even for the steering there in there too. So I think we're pretty good, but there's still, I think we should get some more of the transmission information. We didn't really scan back there, um, but I think we're gonna be running probably the collector in that area. So Diego's actually in the garage right now scanning up the transmission section, and he's gonna be able to ship that over to me wirelessly via Wi-Fi. I just gotta get him this code. So I'll text him this 7199, and when he's done, he could send me over the file, and we could take a look and merge it back in here. Oh, there it goes. It's transferring. All right, there it's completed. Let's take a look at it. See if we've got what we need. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. Here goes a natural scanner. All right, so now we got to put this in with our other one and merge them all together. And we should be ready to start designing in some CAD. So let's do that. We want to have the primaries as equal length as possible for the sound and performance but mostly the sound. We got a lot of comments that we should do 180 degree headers, but these will already be. That's because the Ford V10 is both even fire and we're gonna coin a new term here because it doesn't seem one exists. If it does, please let us know in the comments. Oscillating fire. What does all this mean? Well, even fire means that each cylinder fires an equal number of degrees from the last. A V8 has 90 degrees between each fire. There's also odd fire, but you can't really make those sound good, like a Dodge V10. Not bad, right? That's right, you didn't notice it's actually a tractor revving. Then there is our new term, oscillating fire. We're defining this to mean that the firing order oscillates from bank to bank. The Ford V10 checks both of these boxes. A cross-plane V8 is non-oscillating fire. A small block Chevy, for example, will fire left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right. The Ford V10 is oscillating fire. It fires right, left, right, left, over and over and over. This allows us to pair the five cylinders of each bank together to get that exotic sound of a Ferrari. <laughs> On the cross-plane V8, you need 180 degree headers to physically bring the right cylinders to the left and the left cylinders to the right to mimic the sound of an oscillating fire engine. Or just do an 8 to 1. The Ford V10 being even and oscillating fire has all the characteristics of 180 degree headers and that lets us take full advantage of equal length primaries. This makes sure the exhaust pulses arrive at the collector equally spaced from each other. And to give it all we got, we circularly sequenced the pulses in the collector and mirrored the pattern for our mirrored spire collector. All right guys, after a whole week of padding the headers, we finally have something to show you guys. Damn, look at that. Sure. Equal length V10 headers. These are two inch primaries. Yep. And of course our custom collectors which uh, oh. we gave you guys a sneak peek yeah, a couple of videos ago. Them? Yeah, go bring them. <laughs> Look at that integrated band clamp flange. So these are stainless steel 3D printed collectors. We designed these a couple of weeks ago and because these are 3D printed, we, we took it. the liberty to add a Do couple whatever features. Whatever the fuck you want. So you can see obviously our BIY logo on the pipe. We made mirrored collectors so one's left hand one's right hand and uh so we made them slip fit we added the tabs 
because these are going to be uh, slip-on primaries. And of course, we integrated the V-band clamp uh, flange to the collector, so we don't have to weld anything to these. These are ready to go from the factory. Mm -hmm. So these came out amazing, really cool, really pumped about how that worked out. And then there's a little bit of a, a flex we added. We call these the, uh, the vertex uh, design. Vortex? Vortex. The vortex design. So you not, can... not to be confused with the GM vortex. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the pipes actually twist. So 72 degrees of rotation until they merge at the end. So uh, yeah, these came out really, really cool. All right, well, now that we have the CAD done, we can actually move on to mocking up our headers. Before we start cutting pipes and buying more things, we wanna just make sure it actually translates to real life. So because we have access to a 3D scanner and obviously a 3D printer, we've actually 3D printed all the pipes. You can see here, this is actually from six through 10. This is all the driver's side. And Jack was able to cut up all the bends and all the straights and 3D print them individually. So we should be able to take this, put them together, mount them to the engine, and hopefully it all lines up and this will also serve as templates for us when we actually buy the, the actual tube. So this is gonna come in handy. Obviously, if you don't have access to a 3D scanner or a 3D printer, you can always buy those exhaust fabrication kits. You've probably seen a lot of YouTubers use them. They're just easy to use and it's a nice visual way of fabricating your headers before you actually fabricate them with metal. So probably saves you a lot of time and money, honestly. One of the downsides of those kits, however, is that you're constrained with the actual physical parts you get. Um, so, you know, you may not get exactly, like we wouldn't have been able to do this, right? There's like very unique bends. You're kind of just stuck with whatever they come with. So before we actually got the 3D scanner, I actually went ahead and 3D printed our own kit because we spent all our money on the 3D printed collectors. So uh, you can see here, I've 3D printed I don't even know how many straights and bends and stuff. And so we're going to give this a shot on the passenger side. This is going to get us maybe 90% of the way there. And I actually cheated a little bit because we have CAD. I was able to 3D print uh, very specific bends that I know I needed. So uh, we're going to take this. Jack is going to work on that side. I'm going to start working on this and uh, we'll mock everything up. And if we're happy with the way it looks, we're gonna go ahead and start buying the metal and next video, we'll start fabricating these headers. I used tape to hold the pieces together and built each primary on the workbench before test fitting them to the engine. While I was doing this, Diego went ahead and started putting together the right side with the 3D printed exhaust fabrication kit. And he made quick work of it since he already had a design to reference. I had alignment features on the 3D printed pipes, but I still found a way to flip a few, so I had trouble fitting the pipes to the engine. While I was struggling, Diego finished up his side, and it came out pretty close to the actual design. Alright, well I just finished my side. Uh, I took quite a lot more pieces than I expected. I broke a few of them, but this is the rough idea. So as we mentioned earlier, this is not exactly uh, what is going to look like. You know, some of these straights are not perfectly uh, in length to what I need, but that's just what you get with kits, with kits like this when you're fixed with, uh, you know, the, the, the length of the curves and the straights. But overall, I mean, this is really close to what it, what it should look like. You know, there's areas that are touching here. This is obviously not a perfect circle, but the, the firing order is where it's supposed to be. You know, it's, it's rough and it fits really where it should fit. So, so that's pretty much what you will get with this kind of kit. It's close, but not perfect, but you know, it gives you a good rough idea. Then you can actually fine tune it when you cut your pipes. I think Jack is almost done with his side. There's one more pipe that he's uh, struggling with. Yeah, cylinder seven is giving me problems. We got all of them on there, but this guy, holy smokes. This had the most pieces and the way it lines up some of the, the indicator, like it's symmetric. So if you put it this way, it only changes it by a couple degrees versus putting it like this yeah. way. Yeah. So it's hard to tell, but I think, I think this one was wrong and the one before it, but let's... So that's what's going to be hard when we actually get the pipes, yeah, you're figuring make... out which orientation the cuts go. We got all five here, and this is going to be a pain in the ass to put together. Yep. Aha. Uh -huh. Got it, finally? Yes. 
Yeah, so now all five are. Uh, yeah, I can see her down there. It's fine. And everything's looking good. That is pretty awesome. All right, let me tape this up and then I got to take them all apart because seven has to go first. And then we can put them all back together and then we're going to be able to look at them. So let's do that. <laughs> After making the adjustments, it was a relief to see it all come together how it was supposed to and it started to look like it did on the computer screen. Alrighty, driver's side is all done. Yeah, we had a couple flipped around on that cylinder 7, but I think everything's sitting the way it's supposed to sit now. Does it, does it fit like... You designed it to fit? I mean, it, seems it looks like, like it's, it's good. It's pretty close. It's not bad. Like, you can see it's pretty cool, actually. You, the, the steering. Steering. you see, like, a straight shot to the steering. It's yeah. a tight fit, but... <laughs> like, doing plain operation here. There it is. There she goes. So, Obviously, there's nothing holding it up, but... Yeah, I'm not sure plain. if it Does needs it have to go back more around. We'll <clears> have to... I mean, we'll have to adjust the eyelet, right? Yeah. That was the whole point of that, so... Because the eyelet's pretty high up here. Yeah, yeah. Once all these pipes are welded together, it's going to be real fun to get them and snaking them in between the motor mounts and the engine, the subframe. Yeah. But. So we're going to try one more thing. We're going to try to put the car on it with the exhaust here. Ideally, that's how we could do it. So we could put it together out here and then put the car back on. We slowly lower the car into position while checking both sides for clearance to the exhaust. And we quickly noticed the right hand side was not going to clear the firewall. This wasn't really an issue though, since this side is not the actual design. So we decided to unbolt cylinders 3 and 4 from the engine to move them out of the way. Luckily, the left hand side, which is the actual header design, cleared the firewall and the body rails. Since we didn't move the subframe after we separated it from the body, everything was already aligned and the body dropped into position right where it was supposed to. It actually fits. There you go. 3D scanning, fucking CAD, 3D printing, it works, dude. Yeah, it just kissed that tube yeah. over there, number eight, so. Which is really, that's, I mean, ideally, right, we mount this up and then put the car on top and that's it, bolt up the subframe. But it, it, it looks like we're gonna be able to take the engine in and out of the car without removing the headers, which we really want to avoid that because it's we yeah, can already tell it's going to be a pain in the ass to get to those bolts. So everything looks like it's fitting good. The 3D scan, 3D printing all worked out. And this was our first time. So I want to give a shout out to the Revo Point Morocco. Like I said, first time we've ever 3D scanned and we were able to do something of this caliber and this level and get it to work. So if you want to check them out, all the links are below. I really recommend it. It's a great tool. We enjoyed using it. So now that we got everything up in plastic, now we're going to start turning it into metal in the next video. So make sure to stick around for that because that's going to be a fun one. This V10 is finally going to have real metal headers. So don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss that because that episode is going to be fire. We're going to get some new parts in hopefully too for that and all the tubes. Oh, and don't forget to get your order in at shopbiy.com within the next seven days because we're gonna be throwing in a brand new plasma clutter into one random order. We got shirts, we got sweatshirts, we got the new American double overhead cam V10 hoodie. You got seven days to get your order in. So thank you guys for watching and remember, if you can't buy it, build it. <laughs>